So one final thing to look at is how we represent support conditions in two dimensions. So the problems we've encountered so far, and let's draw them quickly, we had a very simple example with something that we call a simply supported beam. And just to remind ourselves, this beam had a brick wall on the left hand side and a brick wall on the right hand side. And the free body diagram for this, this wall gave us a Y reaction R A Y and a potential X reaction R A X and that really depended on what kind of external force we had and we also had a Y reaction R B Y so that was the free body diagram one other thing we like to do so it's for example if this drawing here was the photograph of the real system what we do in engineering is we reduce these real world problems to a schematic diagram first and lots of the examples you'll see in textbooks or tutorial problems are given as schematic diagrams and then from the schematic diagram we reduce ourselves to our free body diagrams so we're going to draw the schematic diagram for this case so we we'll just draw a line for the beam and then our support conditions at the left hand side a and so I'll put the notes on there that that's a and that is B when we have these two forces it can't move in the X direction or the Y direction but it can rotate and we call the support condition a pin support and we tend to draw a pin support as a triangle we have a hinge or a, or a node at a we have a triangle and then fully supported underneath and that allows rotation at the right hand side we only had a y support and we call this a roller support so in the x direction b can move left or right as it pleases but it cannot move in the y direction and to draw this we actually draw some little wheels so that it can roll left or right and obviously then these wheels need to be supported and we call this a roller support so on the left hand side is pin support and the right hand side we call a roller support and you have slightly different notation in different textbooks but generally this is what you will see then we also had the example just done where we had the beam and this beam was fully fixed into the wall. So this was the real situation where this beam was fixed into a wall. Don't know what happens beyond this wall, but this wall, so this was the real situation. We then said that the and I don't want that. Let's, just, let's go with the black pen. The wall. Then, because of the support condition, gave us a vertical support, R-A-Y. Gave us a horizontal support, R-A-X. But also gave us a moment support, and we call this one M-A. And so in cases where you would encounter this, in textbooks, you'll typically see this drawn. And here's the beam again. You would typically see this support condition drawn as this kind of symbol. So a hatching left on there. And that means that we get the RAX, the RAY, and the moment support on there. And so the tutorials in the notes will... All from this point onwards go with this kind of schematic diagram we've so with the pin support the roller support or the fixed or fully fixed support okay 
So for, an, for example, one of the tutorial questions in the notes has a beam and it has the support conditions at the left hand side we have a pin support somewhere at a distance along the beam we have a roller support and we apply a point load of p and obviously we go and add to this example the dimensions that we need to perform calculations and uh, maybe in this case we had a dimension a maybe in meters a dimension b and again maybe that's given in meters okay and that's how we would draw the situation you'll see this in textbooks all of the time okay so the last thing that we really need to mention here is can i generate enough equations to be all be able to solve this system of equations so the this example has let's draw and this is solvable so we have a y support an x support and a and a y support oops page moved there so we had three supports so three unknowns in the system presuming that we know what the force p is let's have a look at our example above which was a fully fixed in beam and again we had three supports and finally we had our simply supported beam with a pin at one end and a roll of another and again giving us three supports and this is no coincidence if we have less than three supports the body will be able to move in some manner whether it can translate in the y direction or the x direction or it would rotate if you didn't have at least three supports and so if we can generate three equations of equilibrium in two dimensions we need at least three supports for the system to be solvable using statics alone and this concept of just enough support conditions is something crucial and it's what we call statically determinate and this is a really crucial concept if you wish to be able to solve a problem just using the equations of static equilibrium alone then a system must be statically determinate and the key for most problems in this course that you're going to encounter is that you have three supports and we'll come on to this condition later when we encounter trusses